and I sort of touched on this, but um, number three is Christ's soul, not his body, was the sin offering. So it was Christ's soul and not his body that was the sin offering. And why did Jesus Christ have to pay for our sins? Because the Bible says here in verse uh, 20, now then we as we are ambassadors for Christ. So we just touched on that about the soul winning. Uh, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ said, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And I sort of touched on this in my introductions. You know, it made sense to me that if sin was punished by everlasting fire, if Christ was made sin for us, doesn't that make sense that Christ then would then suffer that eternal fire in place of us um, if he took our sin for us? You know, the Bible says that he himself bare our sins in his own body on the tree. So he bare our sins. He, he became sin in order that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So taking that sin, he then went uh, and was punished in hell for that. Uh, let's just go to John 3.14. And this is why it's interesting, because in John 3.14, the Bible says here, Jesus talking about himself, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Um, and sometimes people wonder, why was Jesus Christ being lifted up, and that symbolized as a serpent being lifted up? Well, the reason is because Jesus Christ became sin for us. So that's why there's a serpent. And then in the Old Testament, when they looked at the serpent that was risen up, the brazen serpent, they lived symbolizing Jesus Christ. You say, well, how can, isn't that blasphemous that Jesus Christ is symbolized by a serpent? No, because he became sin for us. He became evil. And that's why he can be symbolized as a serpent lifted up. Because when he was lifted up on that cross, he, he who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree. Um, so Jesus Christ became sin. But let's go to Isaiah 53. And we'll just read through this chapter here. It says, uh, we'll go from verse 3. And we read about the suffering of Jesus Christ. Verse 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So there's that becoming sin for us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. I think that symbolism there is like the Passover lamb, right? Brought to be killed. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. So we'll just stop there first and we'll say, you know, see, he, the suffering was there, the beating the physical suffering and death was there. And people might say, yeah, well, that's the thing. Isaiah 53, it just talks about the physical beating and the suffering. But he didn't burn in hell. But let's read on. And this is why I believe that he did suffer in hell. Uh, it says here, and he had made, look, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, so we've already read about the physical pain and suffering that Jesus Christ went through. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. So just take note of that, that his soul was an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So there's that becoming sin for us. But look at what the Bible says here. He says, he, I believe talking about God, shall see the travail of his soul. So the travail of Jesus Christ's soul burning in hell to be that offering. Because remember the Passover lamb was burnt 
Jesus Christ's soul, not his body, was the offering for sin. So his soul now is fulfilling that by burning in hell. And he's in travail. You see? So that's why I believe that there was suffering here. Um, he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall, be, shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So that's another reason why I believe that there was suffering involved. Um, but see, the soul was the, was the offering for sin. Um, as we see there in verse 10, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. See, the body of Jesus Christ was never burnt. Do you see? So that's why the soul had to be burnt, and the soul can only be burnt in hell. The soul can't be burnt on earth. So just another reason why um, uh, we believe Jesus Christ went to hell. So we see the, the bruising, the grief, and the travail of his soul. Um, I don't see how like he, there couldn't be any suffering um, if, when it uses those sorts of words. 